Hello and welcome to all our gold viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and one of the MCs here at Gold. And I am today so excited because I have a special guest with me here today. The amazing, wonderful Lindsay Hukwe is back with us here. Hi and welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Lovely to have you back. And this time you are going to be part of the midwifery conference add on here for 2023 at gold. We'll chat about your topic in just a moment. Many of our viewers, of course, know of you have uh, seen your books have, uh, you know, are in possession of your books, and, and uh, you know, have uh, viewed presentations with you here at gold, of course, as well. And in many conferences, you've been speaking. But for those of you who don't know you tell us a little bit about yourself in where in the world you are, and also a little bit about your background. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I am located in the southwest of England, um, in Devon, uh, which is a very rural, very beautiful part of um, the south of England. So um, I'm very close to Cornwall. So if you've watched programs like Poldark or Doc Martin, <laughs> that's basically where I hail from. So my nearest neighbours are the Dartmoor ponies. Mm -hmm. um, and my background is in paediatric nursing. I've been a peds nurse for about 20 years, and I'm also a children's public health nurse. And I have been an IBCLC for coming up 12 years. Um, and I'm spending most of my time at the moment wrapping up my PhD, which is uh, in my uh, specialist topic, which is breastfeeding medically complex um, infants and children in the pediatric setting. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And this is wrapping up. It's a very exciting chapter there in your life. We can't wait for you to uh, finish that and uh, come back and talk at Gold here about this too. You have presented at Gold about uh, breastfeeding medically uh, complex infants. And, uh, you know, we can't wait to learn more on this topic there as well. You are also in sleep expert. You present a lot on infant sleep. And um, this is also part of the uh, presentation here at uh, the lecture pack that you're presenting. And your lecture is titled Supporting Families with Sleep while optimizing attachment and responsive feeding. That is such an important topic because I think uh, sleep, Lindsay, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is one of the issues that we hear a lot from families about that uh, they feel like it took them by surprise. They didn't expect things to be like that after the baby was born, right? <laughs> Isn't that what we often hear? Right, <laughs> right, exactly. And um, I think there's a lot of noise out there about sleep now. It, it certainly wasn't the case when I had my um, little ones who are um, who are teenagers and, and entering um, the teenage phase now. Um, and honestly, I think I think the online space has just become very confusing for parents. There's, there's lots of um, talk about what babies should do and how they should behave and what rules you should follow. And I think a lot of parents um, feel trapped between going with their instincts or following mm -hmm. these rules, which are sometimes really difficult to follow as well. Yeah, difficult to follow and uh, not in the best interest uh, of the breastfeeding diet often either. It's kind of, it's a kind of um, sometimes can be quite dangerous. Uh, we hear a lot Absolutely. about sleep coaches who, who are, you know, um, trying to tell parents to put their babies on a schedule. Well, that doesn't really work and is uh, is not good. So um, yeah, and, and, and the internet is a wonderful thing. You can get a lot of information there and it's helpful for parents uh, not to feel isolated, um, but it also is a dangerous place. Place because there's a lot of information out there that's put out. Uh, everybody calls himself an expert, right, Lindsay? And that's the danger there too, that we see that uh, info, lots of information is pushed out there by people who really don't know what's really good for the diet, what's good for the baby, what's good for the parent. Absolutely. And, and some, some, um, some massively out of scope um, stuff yeah. going on uh, mm -hmm. people you know diagnosing things they have no place diagnosing um, wading into areas about which they have no expertise or business um, mm -hmm. uh, speaking to um, and of course parents don't always know who can be trusted and, and who can't right. they sometimes think well you know a million followers a million people yep. can't be mm -hmm. wrong so you know we'll just go with go with that program or follow that recommendation or um, you know follow um, that piece of advice and yeah you're absolutely right sometimes the consequence is um, you know a, a dent 
of the parental mental health. Sometimes mm -hmm. um, it's breastfeeding getting derailed. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's um, distressed infants. Sometimes it's, um, you know, frayed and difficult relationship with your baby or even just feeling like your baby or you are somehow broken and mm -hmm. don't fit the mold. Um, so it's a catalogue of um, things that are really difficult for parents to kind of navigate yeah. as they're becoming new parents and, um, you know, transitioning from being a couple to being a family at the same time. Yeah, it's a, it is, a, it's an exciting time, but also a very challenging time often. <laughs> and uh, yes, so your topic, as I mentioned, is titled supporting families with sleep while optimizing attachment and responsive feeding. Let's uh, focus on the part of the responsive feeding. Um, can you explain that a little bit for us? Yeah, well, as I, as I mentioned, you know, there, there are a lot of, um, people talking about non-evidence-based practices mm -hmm. and um, promoting uh, sleep schedules or, you know, sleep programs that do not align with responsive feeding. So, for example, trying to um, stop babies from falling asleep while they're feeding, mm. um, trying to put babies down awake, um, alone um, in their cribs um, rather than uh, feel confident to soothe and settle them um, parents feeling like they have to um, kind of tank their baby up with you know large volumes of milk in order to help them sleep um, parents thinking that they shouldn't be feeding at night past an arbitrary age so you know all of these yeah. myths that are very abundant and prevalent in the sleep world um, we need to have some answers as mm -hmm. IBCLCs and breastfeeding lactation advocates um, so that we can kind of steer parents towards helping themselves towards better sleep but at the same time not compromising their breastfeeding goals and um, kind of derailing their uh, their confidence as new parents um, getting to know their babies and and feeling like they genuinely are the experts on their babies rather mm -hmm. than some random influencer on Instagram. Absolutely. Well, that uh, sounds fantastic, Lindsay. I can't wait to hear from you, Lindsay, our myth buster when it comes to what myths are out there, how babies should behave, how parents should behave, and uh, what is really optimal for the family to, to support them there. And uh, ultimately, you're absolutely right. The families are the experts on their own baby. So um, they are often just also lacking the confidence and uh, helping them to gain that is very important as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for sitting down here with me, Lindsay, and chatting about this important topic. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you for having me. And uh, the presentation by soon-to-be Dr. Lindsay Hookway is part of our lecture pack here titled Clinical Tools for Changing the Landscape of Newborn Care. As I mentioned, it's the add-on package to our Gold Midwifery Online Conference. The conference will start February 6th. So that lecture pack is also going to be available for viewing on February 6th. If you would like to find out more about this presentation and all the other presentations in the lecture pack and in the Midwifery Conference, we invite you to visit goldmidwifery.com. Thank you again, Lindsay, for being here today with me. And thank you all to all the audience for watching and participating with us today. Bye-bye, everyone.